It's Andre from High Performance Academy here. Let's check out what's been going on around HPA over the last couple of weeks. Uh, now, the other thing that I've been doing uh, over the last uh, week or so is adding another worked example into our WinOLS uh, course, which will teach you how to use WinOLS to find and define maps in a raw binary file. And just very quickly, for those who've never heard the term WinOLS before, uh, it is a binary editor that is used for finding and defining maps in the, the raw file that's downloaded out of a factory ECU. And while it can be used on essentially any ECU, there's not really any limits here, uh, it really has become uh, mainstream in the European car industry for aftermarket tuning. And this is because traditionally there haven't been a lot of commercial aftermarket reflashing support for that style of vehicle. So people were over there tuning these cars, were basically left to their own devices to find out how to do it without a lot of uh, commercial support. So that's where Win OLS comes in. So I'll just show you quickly through this. So this is uh, an Audi Q7 that we're working on. This is a 2011 model, runs a 4.2 litre V8 twin turbo turbo diesel engine. So uh, not really that important, the specifics of it, but I just wanted to sort of show you, first of all, what this all looks like. So there's a couple of ways we can display the information here. Uh, and this is graphically looking at it in a 2D format. So all of these lines here obviously don't make a lot of sense, but we'll get into that in a moment. But we're actually seeing the contents of the memory uh, locations inside of that factory ECU. Now there's a little toolbar down the bottom and we can see the area that I have just highlighted in the bottom right, this is essentially the area of that raw binary file that contains our tuned data. And we've got this little white box that I'll just point to. That is where we are currently located inside of the uh, tuned file. So we can see whereabouts or what address we're actually accessing. So part of using OLS is obviously understanding the fundamentals of how the software works and how to manipulate the software to get what we want. But it really comes down beyond that to then using pattern recognition. So looking at what we've got on the screen at the moment, if you haven't used OLS before, it's going to mean absolutely nothing. But when we know what we're looking for, we're actually going to know that currently we are looking at uh, a set of tables which are referred to as driver's wish, or I prefer to use the terminology driver requested talk. So essentially what the driver is asking for with the throttle pedal. So these are going to be three dimensional tables. They're going to have RPM on the vertical axis, the Y axis. They're going to have throttle position or driver's pedal position, accelerator pedal position on the X axis. And then the uh, Z axis or the map data is actually going to be requested to talk. And with this particular controller, it's a Bosch EDC 17. Uh, this is specifically in Newton meters. So how do we know that? Well, within our course, what we've done is we have produced a range of sample patterns to look for. So that's what I've just brought up here. I mean, unsurprisingly, it looks a lot like what we were just looking at. But basically, we've provided samples of what uh, a driver requested torque table is going to look like. That's exactly what we've got here. Then it's a case of scrolling through all of the map addresses until we actually find uh, visually something that looks exactly like this. So obviously that's what we've got. Let's go back to OLS now. Now the other element here is that when we load a raw binary file into WinOLS, what it'll do is it'll go through and it will find what it thinks are maps. And if we look over here on the right hand side, uh, we can see here that it's got a folder that says potential maps 595, which on face value is helpful and also incredibly daunting. 595 maps is a lot. And the reality is for a basic stage one tune, we're not going to need anything like that number of maps and less is definitely more in this, in this instance. So we'd probably only need to find and define about 20 key maps that we're actually going to need to make the relevant changes for a basic stage one upgrade. And I use that term stage one, it's one I actually don't really like because it's thrown around so much and there's not really a strict definition for it. Uh, 
because it's so prom- prominent in the OLS world, we have decided to roll with it. But essentially what I'm talking about here is stage one would be a car that's mechanically completely standard, or maybe it's got a very basic upgrade such as an intake uh, air filter or something like that. So not any mechanical changes. So we don't need to be going too deep into things. All right, so anyway, we've got our, our map found here, and Bosch is the, sorry, the OLS software has actually gone through and it's highlighted this here as one of the uh, maps that it thinks exists. And this is, as I say, is a blessing and a curse because in this instance it's right, it it has found a map that actually exists that we're going to want to define, but it's also going to find a whole bunch of maps that we don't need, that's the 595 that it's, it's highlighted, and just as importantly it's also going to miss a whole bunch of maps that we do need. So If you are a little bit eagle-eyed here, you'll see that this pattern that we've got down the bottom actually repeats. Yes, there are some differences, but we can see that we actually have a whole bunch of maps here uh, that are essentially the same, but but the OLS software has actually missed all of those. I want to keep this really simple and quick, so I'm not going to go into that uh, in too much more detail. But what we can do is convert this into a map, and let's double-click on it and see what it gives us. All right. So we've got a three-dimensional table, which is mostly good, but looking at it, the numbers in here are absolute garbage, or at least to us. Uh, We don't really know how to make sense of these numbers, and this is where adding scaling information is so critical when we're using OLS. So these are just the raw values, but we need to convert these into numbers that are actually meaningful. So if we're talking about maybe uh, ignition timing in a gasoline engine, we would want to convert it into ignition timing values that we actually know. In this case here, the vertical axis, the y-axis, as I mentioned, is going to be RPM. Well, clearly our big 4.2 litre turbo diesel V8 is not going to rev to 10,700 RPM. Uh, Likewise, this axis here is our throttle position and uh, I don't really think we need to be using 8,192% throttle. So let's see how we can deal with this. Let's start with our uh, RPM axis. So what we can do is come over to the axis, double click on it, and that will give us our Y axis. I'm just going to do this really quickly. Uh, So Let's just call that position, accelerator position. Can't really do two things at once here. And we want to show this in a percentage. And now what we want to do is scale this. So that's Y axis. So let's actually start that again because it's uh, engine RPM, as I already said. And that is not in percentage. Uh, we are in RPM. And in this case, the scaling factor for this particular parameter, we simply need to divide this by 2, which is the same as, in this case here, this is the scaling process. The value is going to be equal to the top number times the raw value, which is our EEPROM value, divided by 1, and then we can have an adder if we need. So in order to divide this by 2, there's a couple ways we can go about it. Uh, We can simply enter a value of 0.5. Straight away, as I do this, we can see that the axis now starts to take shape. And 5,355 RPM, yeah, that probably starts to make a little bit more sense for a diesel engine. So okay, we've got numbers that make sense there. Let's just go back and I'll show you another way of doing that. Uh, We can come down and hit this little function button here, and that will bring up another way of adding that formula. So we can click here, our output is going to be equal to, it's pretty straightforward, our input, so that's our rule number, plus in this case zero, multiplied by one plus zero, and then divided by one. So at the moment, basically it's the rule number. So in this case, as I said, to get from our raw value to our RPM, we want to divide by two. So we'll put two on the bottom, click OK. Obviously it's exactly the same job done. Let's have a look at our X axis, which is our pedal position. Again, I'll just do this really quickly. And this one in fact is our percentage. And This is uh, a natural progression of our binary numbers, our our decimal logical numbers. So if we actually look at this number here, 8,192, basically we start with our our values and we go sort of 8, 16, 32, 64, 256, and we keep going in that logical order. We get up to a value of 8,192. If you haven't seen it before, it's going to make absolutely no sense to you, but we've got a cheat sheet that shows you these common numbers and you start to get a feel for them. So when I 
see a value of 8192, I straight away know that this is one of these logical values. Uh, so what we're going to want to do here is again hit our little function button and we're going to click on our output here. So we can see these numbers up the top. So what I'm going to do what's our throttle position going to be? 0 to 100%. So we want to divide by, in this case, 81.92. Now we've got numbers that are scaling from 0 to 100. We'll click OK. We can also add a little bit of precision here if we want, not really strictly necessary, but now we've got numbers that actually look like they make sense. Lastly, our map values here. So the output of this, remember, it's a driver requested torque table. The output from this table, the z-axis, is requested to talk. This is directly in Newton meters. Uh, in this case, we're looking at these numbers here. Obviously, it'd be nice, but uh, our turbo diesel is probably not going to be putting out 3,000 Newton meters of torque. Uh, but 300 is probably a realistic value. So let's just try multiplying that out by uh, 0 0.1. Again, we can add a little bit of precision if we want. Click OK. And now we've actually got a table that is defined. So this is the process we go through. I know that I've done this very, very quickly. Uh, but this is the skill set that's required in order to find and define maps using OLS. Of course, if you do want to learn more, you can check out, check out our Win OLS Map uh, Mastery course. You can find that at hpacademy.com forward slash courses. Uh, I'll get Sam to put a link to that in the show notes, uh, sorry, in the description as well, comments, so that you can follow that really easily. Right, lastly, just a reminder, our giveaway, there is 15 days left for that to run for a BG Racing String Wheel Alignment Kit plus a, a suite of HPA courses so that you'll know exactly what to do with it. Head to uh, hpacademy.com forward slash giveaway to get your name into the draw. There is no strings attached, pun completely intended there. Don't need to purchase anything, it is absolutely free to enter and again we'll ship that direct to your door if you're the winner regardless whereabouts in the world you are. If you like that video make sure you give it a thumbs up and if you're not already a subscriber make sure you're subscribed. We release a new video every week and if you like free stuff we've got a great deal for you. Click the link in the description to claim your free spot to our next live lesson.